Hey everyone, Mecca here. I want to follow up on the charity stream that I hosted on January the 1st this year. It was an amazing success and there's a couple of loose ends I want to tie up in this video. So first of all, one more time, I just want to thank everyone who tuned in, everyone who donated and those who helped out. Thanks to everyone who hung out in the call or helped in the other way. I have a very elaborate write-up on my community tab that you give a read. I'm not going to read it out all again and avoid repetition, but thanks to all of you for coming in clutch and helping out on a pretty short notice too. Um, this whole idea was basically thought of like a week in advance, like literally the day before Christmas, I just threw the idea out on one of my private Discord servers and it spiraled out of control really quickly. So we ended up raising over $5,000 for Futures Without Violence and the other day Sion deposited the first 5000 to them. The rest will have to come a day after due to the daily limit on Sion's credit card. Like, we actually raised more money than the daily limit that Sign is allowed to pay someone else. That's that's super funny to me. Uh, in case you're wondering, Sign is the one doing all that since he has a credit card and I don't. And the donation page of Futures Without Violence doesn't have any other options, so I asked Sign to do it after getting the money to him first, of course. Anyway, this stream was phenomenal in every aspect. This was the first charity stream that I've ever hosted myself. I've been a guest on a couple of them, but I never hosted one. And I have to admit, I was more than a little scared of being underprepared, but we only had one significant technical issue that had nothing to do with the preps for this whole stream, and that was just a complex problem with my own internet connection. It had nothing to do with it being a charity stream. Other than that, everything technical basically worked itself out, you know, besides a couple of emulator crashes, but, you know, fuck that shit. I mean, my Nintendo PC, of course. Uh, but everything else worked out as intended, and I'm super happy with the amount of money we raised, and I'm super happy with all the cooperation between members of the Fire Emblem community. It's just super cool. Uh, so I was hoping to have some news from Future Without Violence on what kind of things they can do with the money we raised. I did reach out to them through an email asking about that money thing I talked about earlier, like uh, how to deposit money to them without a credit card. Uh, I ended up solving that myself before they got back to me. Uh, and in that same email I asked them if they'd be up for something like an interview or you know, just a short response or something. Uh, they only responded to my question about the money, so I'm gonna go ahead and take the hint and assume they're just not up for it. And you know, that's fine, it is what it is. No matter what, $5,000 is a lot of money and I know there's a lot of things you can do with it, so I'm not too worried about where the money, where the money is going. Uh, as for Project Ember, I want to talk about that real quick too. I don't want to turn this into a whole uh, Mecha Reviews Project Ember video because it's not what I intended to do, but a lot of people ask me about it, so I thought I'm going to you know, dedicate some time to it. Um, I have always been someone who enjoys FE6 despite its flaws, although at times it can be rather frustrating and sometimes tedious to play. Uh, there is a reason that Fire Emblem 6 RNG is bugged, it's such a meme. I think the developer team of Project Ember have shown themselves to be very much in touch with the Fire Emblem player base and its common complaints, because I think they've addressed just about every big issue with it. Uh, my biggest problems with vanilla FE6 are two things, ambush bomb reinforcements and low hit rates. And Ember addresses both of these the best it can. It gets rid of almost all the ambush spawns. I remember there being some left, but either they are hard coded in or they're just not a super big deal. And the other one, the lower hit rates, that's also taken care of with generally higher stats and weapons and units alike. Now a big problem with just adding higher hit to FE6 weapons is that the early game can become really hard because a lot of your characters can be a bit reliant on dodging to survive the high enemy density. But I think Ember circumvents this by making all player units more competent, especially offensively, or in the case of the Armor Knights, defensively, so it ends up not being as much of a problem. Later on in the game, I did find it almost impossible to engage with multiple enemies at once without dying with most of the casts, so the high enemy density in those parts made it really hard to navigate at times, but not impossible. And other than the gameplay problems that these two flaws create, I'm generally happy with FE6 as a game. Like, I think the map design on the whole is fairly solid, with some exceptions like the Sakai gimmicks in Chapter 8, but they still made some improvements there. Like, Project Ember Chapter 8 is a big, big step up from its old self, and it was actually fun to play. I think Ember's biggest boon, though, is the buffs to almost the entire cast, and I'm saying this as someone who actually likes the goofy, imbalanced units in FE6. Some people use unit imbalance as a criticism, but for me that's part of the charm. I like having both busted units like Rutger and terrible units like Wendy. And if some units end up being inferior, that's just kind of whatever to me. So when people say like unit imbalance is a problem with FE6, 
I'm just not seeing it, but Ember fixed it anyway and made every unit unique and worth using in some way. They made some especially big buffs to foot units and especially armored units. They made infantry worth using without making it feel bad to use the mounted units. So yeah, I just wanted to get it out there. I enjoy playing it and I wouldn't mind doing it again. I think it's the most relevant lesson of all this. Uh, there are some people out there who try to argue whether Ember is better or worse than vanilla and whether his Ember is faithful enough to the original design or not or whatever. There's definitely a discussion to be had here, but it's not one I'm going to tackle today. So for now, I'll just recommend I, I would play Ember if I were you. I would also play Vanilla. I think they're best if you play them both. Uh, last final thing I need to get out here because I still see the question out there every now and then. Will the VOD be public for those who missed the stream? And the answer is... I thought it would be, but if it is, it's taking its sweet, sweet time to render. The stream is 30 hours long, and I'm not sure if YouTube is capable of processing it at this point. It's been nearly three weeks now, and I really hope it does, because I didn't make a local recording for this stream. I usually do record all my streams to my hard drive as a backup, but since this stream was pretty tech-intensive, um, having to run Parsec and a bunch of other people having to be connected to my PC, uh, we decided to against it, um, you know, just to make sure it wouldn't crash or go very slowly. But at this point, I'm not sure if it will render. Uh, there are 24-hour streams that have rendered just fine on YouTube, but I'm not sure about 30 hours. And I check it every now and then, it just says it's not available. So I am trying to not get my hopes up. Uh, if it does end up going there, then great. We'll be able to rewatch all the best moments live. And if not, well, at least now we know and we take we could take steps in the future to archive it in some other way. Uh, like we can split the stream or make a local recording because I know one thing for sure, I definitely want this to be a returning thing. It was so much fun. Um, thank you for watching. Peace.